Stone Cold Classic. Last time, either we left off at the end of Chapter 6, or we left off finishing off the Koopa Coot stuff, depending on whether you chose to watch Episode 14 or the first bonus video. And in today's episode, Episode 15, we start with speaking to Merlin. But the problem with Merlin is that every time he talks, my finger just reflexively goes to the beat button. But we have a new face here. Say hello to the Ninji, an enemy that originated from Super Mario Bros. 2 USA. Apparently he hails from Starborn Valley in the Shiver region. A chill... I like how he says a chill place. Probably should have said a chilly place far to the north at the very end of the earth. And apparently uh, Merle is Merlin's son. I don't know when it's mentioned. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I usually skip Merlin's dialogue, but I did get that much that Merle is indeed Merlin's son. So that's an interesting uh, tidbit. So something about Merlin is talking about something about how we need to find a pipe in the sewers in order to be able to access uh, the Shiver region, as it were. But here's the thing. We kind of are already halfway there, thanks to doing all the extra stuff, not only towards the end of episode 14, but also during the bonus video with Koopa Coot and all that stuff, because when you do the Koopa Coot favors after chapter 6, ideally, because that is when you can actually finish off Koopa Coot, uh, there are usually a lot of extra things you can do adjacent to the Koopa Coot favors, so as a result, you will probably have made a little bit of progress here. Not only that, but even if you're not doing Koopa Coot stuff, when we came here to get the Ultra Boots, I was able to knock out some progress by getting the hidden blocks out of the way. So we enter the door, which can only be opened after you talk to the Ninji. We enter this very frozen area. And say hello to the second to last Super Block, or Upgrade Block, whatever you want to call it. This is a very good opportunity. We only have two party members left to upgrade. I recommend upgrading Cooper. There is an upgrade block to be found in Chapter 7 proper, but it's a, it's closer to the midway point of the chapter rather than early on. So this one, you want this is your last chance, honestly, to upgrade Cooper just in time for him to learn the move Power Sh or sorry, Fire Shell. Is it Fire Shell? Yes, Fire Shell. For five flower points, it will deal a ma around six damage to all enemies on the ground. So that's about equal to Bombette's single upgrade power bomb, but one flower point cheaper. However, since it's a fire move, it will deal extra damage to ice enemies. So because Chapter 7, a Star Spirit on ice. And yes, say hello to Shiver City, if I'm not mistaken, it's what it's called. And we have access to quite a few uh, of the usual stuff in towns. We have an item shop over here. Let's see what it's selling. A Dizzy Dial for 15 coins. Huh. A Shooting Star for 30 coins is a solid deal. Snowman Dolls for 8 coins. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I think the developers just put the Snowman Doll here for decoration. They don't expect you to buy it. 40 coins for a live stream is solid. 20 coins for the 10 HP items. That's also just alright. Thankfully, we also took care of a lot of cooking during the bonus video, so we don't really have to look at that. And I'm already entering the chapter with plenty of uh, nice items to have, including a blueberry, which I actually acquired when I went to knock out another Amazing Daisy or two. As you can see... Our star points are at 93, so we will have an upgrade fairly early on in the chapter. And we also have the Toad House. Now, I do want to point out that there is something special about this Toad House, but that's not going to be relevant right now. It should be relevant at the end of this episode, because as usual, uh, I will be doing this chapter hopefully in two episodes. 
it shouldn't have to be split into three. At least I would hope not. Anyway, you want to enter to the left from the warp pipe. And then you want to enter this house. Uh, you can talk to this penguin, known as a Bumpty, which is an enemy that also originated from Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Apparently, he's craving a shaved ice, strawberry or watermelon flavor, or tangy tangerine. Which is basically an offshoot of the orange, but as you can see this formation here, there's like a dresser, and then there's a fireplace, and then there's a bookshelf, and then there's a bunch of books, but hey! You can exit the window, and now you're on the awning! Use paracarry to go up to the other side. Heck, you might not even need paracarry to be honest, but paracarry is the safe bet. And enter the other house, which you normally can't access, to acquire the final Attack FX badge. Attack FX E. Note that this badge is colored green. I don't even have to equip it. I know the sound effect that it makes. It's a Yoshi sound effect, which is adorable. Alright, and now, you may have seen my I Spy badge uh, light up earlier. That's because there's a star panel here. Now, you want to get it now because in a few minutes, it's going to be temporarily inaccessible. You will see why. Before we enter, why don't we have Cooper in the party since he's obviously going to be surprisingly relevant in this chapter, at least combat-wise. So we enter this house, and what you'll note is that there is a female penguin here that welcomes you about her husband because this is actually the home of the mayor of Shiver City. But we enter, and this looks odd. Very odd, I would say. So let's examine this penguin that clearly looks like he's been knocked unconscious. The body doesn't budge an inch, though. Well, but he has a memo in his hand that says Herringway which is obviously a pun on Hemingway, an infamous uh, book author, to my knowledge. But basically, what's going on here is that his wife enters the room, and she assumes the worst. Believe it or not, this kind of mindset is more common than you think. People that always assume the worst, because I guess if you assume the worst, then if it turns out to be better than what you feel, how can you be disappointed? But that mindset isn't perfect. And you'll see why this is in this case. Because she winds up getting the authorities involved. At least, I have to assume that this green penguin in the uh, hat is an authority. Because of course she assumes that her husband is dead, even though Yes, he's not moving an inch, but there aren't really any other signs that he's dead. You know, I mean, the X is on the eyes. That's usually a common sign in anime that someone has just been knocked unconscious. That or dizzy symbols, you know. I think the dizzy symbol thing might have been more common in more recent anime, but you have to remember that Paper Mario originally released in the year 2000 in Japan. Uh, the next year for the Americas, and so on and so forth, as it were. But apparently she claims that her husband was awake prior to Mario arriving. So that is why the suspicion lays on the Mario, as it were. And it is worth noting that this is one of the very few instances in the game where, you, if depending on the partner you have, they will have different dialogue to say, eight different kinds of dialogue because you have eight partners at this point. Yeah, this is going to be the first chapter in the game, and there's only two two, cha two chapters left. This is going to be the first chapter in the game where you'll have your entire party available to you from the start. And mostly uh, fully upgraded too, thanks to that uh, super block that we found just before we entered Shiver City. And that was only one dialogue box, so I, I think it's usually only like one or two dialogue bubbles that the partner will have, so it's not really that big of a deal. At any rate, though, how could such a horrible plot twist hit our peaceful city? You, Mr. Mustache, once more for the record, you swear you didn't do this. Okay, I think I believe you. But this means we have to find the true murderer. Uh, yes, I was channeling a bit of that Courage of the Cowardly Dog energy right there with that, uh, that episode of Crazy Fred. Where he's, he's saying, like, Naughty 
I thought that was a pretty funny episode in retrospect. Some people think it's really creepy. I'm just like, it's a cartoon, dude. Of course it's gonna be silly. Oh, man, Curry's and Cowardly Dog was a really good show. Funnily enough, I think it started airing around the same time this game came out in Japan, so... Just a fun coincidence there. I mean, how often do I get to reference non-video game stuff? And hey! We get to knock off another quiz on the Cowwiz! That's everyone's favorite quiz master, ch 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 quiz mode! Want to try the ch 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 quiz then let's go to the question. Trying to make it sound like he's shivering a little bit. Where's Mer Lovely, who tells fortunes about special things, live? Shooting Star Summit, of course. It's a good thing that the he did. They didn't put um dry dry outpost as an answer because that could be kind of a trick question, since as we know, her sister is Merly, who lives in dry dry outpost and casts spells rather than tell fortunes. You have correctly answered 15 questions! Which is good, because when I get around to that grind, I think that means I'm only gonna have... I don't even want to think about that right now. I, I want to say off the top of my head, 49 questions. So during this murder mystery, we are unable to leave, to leave Shiver City, and we need evidence. Well, I guess we'd better call on Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Which, funnily enough, actually the first game was released on the Game Boy Advance in Japan the same year that Paper Mario released in America. Okay, I, I, I need to quit doing that. Anyway, we need to head to the right, because you need to use the Tornado Jump three times on the frozen, frozen water of the lake. Somehow this is enough to actually break the ice, and the water is essentially restored. And we can actually use Sushi... For the only time in the chapter, same with Flora Fields, it's funny how they shoehorn in a way for sushi to be used to be useful. Not not just in Flower Fields, but also in Shiver City. And both times, it doesn't seem to make that much sense. But it's funny, so you know. Anyway, we hit in the house, uh, we use the spring jump up here. We don't need Paracarry this time around, but you do need you do need to jump down this chimney. Or at least walk down the chimney. Ah, I guess Mario is trying to channel some of that Santa Claus energy. What in the... Why are you in my fireplace? You found my secret room. Through the chimney. Ingenious. Me, I'm Harry the novelist. Haven't you heard of me? Let's see. What? Mayor Penguin was murdered. And I'm the chief suspect. You must be joking. That's ridiculous. I did no such thing. And yeah, it's because there's a note that has his name on it, so... And we just gotta go through this whole rigmarole. Thankfully, it doesn't take that long. I know, I know some people enjoy this part because it's just... It's so silly, you know, the whole penguin murder mystery thing. And what really makes it funny is how we're going to find out the conclusion of this. Also, something I always like doing ever since the first time I played this game, whenever there's an opportunity for you to outrun the NPC to the destination, I always try to make it like a race. I did this with Merlon in the start, and I'm doing it now with Herringway. It's actually kind of funny. So, But I don't think it's possible in this case, because Herringway just gets so far ahead of you, it's actually kind of crazy. Oh, you again. Have you come up with anything? Hmm? Say, isn't the penguin behind you the mystery novel writer named Harryway? What, what? Mayor Penguin was clutching a piece of paper that had Harryway written on it. Bah, if that were true, I most certainly would have. Oh. Huh, he definitely does appear to be holding a piece of paper. Yes, of course, it's a message. With his last breath, the mayor told us the murderer's identity. So, Mr. Herringway, you cold-hearted murderer. It all makes sense now. No wonder your novels are so suspenseful. You live out your own plots. Dear man, do you have any idea how ridiculous you sound? Do you actually think I would do this to the mayor? He's a great friend of mine. <sighs> yes, yes, you were good friends. 
Ah, but that was just a cover, so that no one would suspect you of this heinous crime. That's it, isn't it? I've solved this crafty mystery. Oh, come on, really, you simple, simple penguin. I would never be so predictable. Besides, I'm completely innocent. I've been working in my house on a new novel for weeks. I didn't have time to sneak over here to kill Mayor Penguin. And uh, the wife is still pointing flippers at Mario, but when has Mario ever murdered anyone or anything? Not counting all the Goombas and enemies you have to jump on in Super Mario Brothers. Not counting all the enemies we had to defeat along the way to this point. Or in Super Mario RPG, which did release before Paper Mario. Or Super Mario Brothers 2. Or Super Mario Brothers 3. You you get the idea. And before you say Yoshi's Island, technically, while Baby, Baby Mario was riding on Yoshi, it's actually very rare that Baby Mario himself was able to defeat any enemies. Usually that was Yoshi. So in other words, they were in cahoots in that game, which is a big difference when you have an accomplice, as it were. So yeah, the mayor's just fine, you know, it was all it was all a big misunderstanding. He just reached up, trying to get a present for his friend Herringway. Yeah no. Just normal penguin things. Not sure about the overreacting part though. And then they all lived happily ever after. But what's very interesting is if you remember from the very first episode of the Let's Play, Mayor Penguin was present at the uh, party at Peach's Castle before everything flew up into the sky. So it really feels like we're kind of coming full circle here, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to skip the rest of this dialogue. You know, I don't want to let the pacing keep us forever. But Herringway mentioned something about this would be good material for a sequel. Of course. But anyway, we need to talk to Mayor Penguin because we need his permission in order to actually go where we need to go to find the Star Spirit to Starborn Valley, which is to the east of here. So he'll tell the gatekeeper to, uh, yeah, and tell us that you better bungle up now until you get warmer to the media backside to differ, judging by the hole in the side like, where am I going with that? Anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and head east. Thankfully, we haven't actually battled anything, so... Yeah. And you're probably wondering why I'm saying battle. Well, you'll see why. Because we may or may not be about to battle uh, someone or something rather early on in this chapter. In fact, who we're about to fight? We're about to fight earlier than you might expect up to this point in the game. And who we're about to fight is... Hey, 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 hey! It's fine! No, it's J Junior Troopa. <laughs> I've been waiting for you, Mario. I've been here forever. I was getting desperate. I thought I was gonna freeze. This place is freezing and cold and nasty and icy. I hate it. I can't take it anymore. I gotta get out of here. I'm going to beat you up in record time. And head back to some place warm. You ready, Ice Boy? Alright, so say hello to Junior Troop, uh... What is this, the fifth fight? The sixth fight? You kind of lose count by this point. But, uh, yeah, Junior Troop is changing things up and taking a page out of the Magikoopa's book for a final exam, as it were. So, as usual... Let's take advantage of our Quick Change Badge, and let's tattle Junior Troopa. It's Junior Troopa! I'm stunned! Really! This guy just will not quit! 50 HP, 8 attack, and only 1 defense. Now, it is worth noting that the last time we fought him, he got knocked down to 20, but technically, his max HP was still 40. Which is interesting. So now, yeah, going for 20 to 50 is a big step up. But let's look at the positives. He's no longer in the air and he doesn't have a spike on his head. Somehow, I think he may have overlooked that sort of thing. Now, he has a very high attack stat of 8. So, you want to take advantage. I mean, we've had this power for a few chapters now, but now of all times, 
is when you want to start taking advantage of my favorite source spirit, Muscular. Arr, matey! Take a chill pill, why don't ya? Mario, you like magic tricks? You won't like this one! As usual, the magic attacks are a little tricky to guard. <laughs> that felt fantastic! I just keep on getting better! Which is technically true. 50 HP is a lot to overcome here. But I have access to the usual techniques, Power Quake for piercing damage, and the Down Jump. I actually equipped the Down Jump for the Chapter Boss, not so much Junior Troopa, because he only has uh, the one defense. So let's have Mario charge up for a bit. And while Junior Troopa is still chilling out, why don't we take advantage of uh, Watch for a little bit to give Mario a good old a Turbo Charge. Just so we have an extra plus one attack over here. And yet, yeah, do your best to try and guard the magic attacks. It's easier said than done, I know. You can have Sushi use Water Block to reduce the damage even further. You can use Bow for out of sight. Or, probably the most convenient option is just have Lakylster do Cloud 9, just like we did against um, Huffington. I mean, Lakylster has to be useful for something, right? I I'm just saying. So with that under our belt, let's go ahead and do a regular jump attack with the charge just to get a very strong first attack on Junior Troop, as it were. 50% chance to dodge his attacks is very nice. We don't need to waste turns charging because we have Turbo Charge. And with one defense in mind, I'm actually going to have Paracarry come out and use a Shell Shot. Because I feel like it's been a while since I've had Paracarry use that move. And that used to be, like, one of my favorite moves in the game. <laughs> in, in the first couple playthroughs back in my childhood, you know? And, uh, I'll save Cooper's Flame Fire Shell debut for when we run into some ice enemies. It's not going to take that long. So, if you're looking for the path of least flower point consumption, just use Watt's Electro Dash, as it were. And while you have Turbo Charge up, just keep doing regular jumps, to be honest. And we are about to finish off Junior Troopa in the next turn, if I am not mistaken. Yep, that was a very nice dodge on the last turn of Turbo Charge, too. Let's go ahead... Yeah, let's go ahead and finish him off with a hammer attack. I was thinking about doing a focus, but... Eh, forget about it. Alright, so that gives us 23 star points. Hey, we get a level up. Isn't that nice and convenient? Even if you don't level up here, you can always go back to the Toad House in Shiver City. And yeah, we're pretty much just going to alternate HP and flower points at this point. No! As usual, you can hit Junior Trooper with the hammer and all the other stuff. You can jump on him. You can, um, use Cooper Shell Toss, I think. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, you can use Cooper Shell Toss. You can use Bombettes, Bomb Attack, and, hell, what else? Um, that's actually it, funnily enough. So let's go ahead and uh, ride on with Kyle Sturr, since, it, like I said, his speed is more consistent than, uh, spin. But... You want to hit this tree a bunch of times because for some reason by hitting the tree, the tree just like flies off and you get a letter to Mayor Penguin. Which is pretty convenient because yeah, Mayor Penguin's in Shiver City. We have a star panel here. Take note of the snowman and the missing features. But here is a very well hidden repel gel behind that tree. I definitely want to show that off. And just so you know, we're at two star pieces in the chapter, and there's like six in total, I think, so there we go. Alright, before we move on, let's have Cooper, because, lo and behold, we have a new variant of uh, Piranha Plant. Oh boy, well, is it, this is actually quite the whopper here, hold up. Okay, so first, let's tattle an enemy called the Frost Piranha. This is a Frost Piranha. So, these guys have 10 HP and 4 attack power. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Wait, so the Frost Piranhas have 2 less HP than the Putrid Piranhas? Yes, but the Frost Piranhas also have more attack. And their Breath Attack, instead of poisoning you, will freeze you in place. Meaning you won't be able to attack, as it were. So, given the situation, I think this is actually a great time to give our new timeout timeout ability a try. 
because even if we only stop like two or three of these enemies, uh, that'll still help us out tremendously, I must say. So, yeah, here's hoping. Cross your fingers. Oh, wow, it actually worked on all of them. And yeah, they're knocked out for five turns. Holy cow. Uh, so let me just crack my finger. And I guess we can take our sweet time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go ahead and tackle this enemy, uh, a Gulpit. Whoa, Gulpits look pretty burly, don't they? Yes, they do. Now, these guys do have 12 HP. Now, the attack power is a little bit disingenuous because Gumbario was listed as 2. That's because Gulpits have, like, three different types of damage output. So, you may have noticed the rocks in the background. Big rocks will deal 7 damage to you. The small rocks will deal 5 damage. When Gulpits run out of rocks to shoot at you, they will have a Lick Attack that only does 2 damage. It's actually pretty rare to see the Lick Attack because... Usually, by the time they even get close to using up all the rocks, you will have most likely already won the fight, as it were. So, let's go ahead and focus to try and restore some of our star energy, because I'm just going to have Cooper debut his new Fantastic Fire Shell. Again, the base damage is 6, but when used on an ice enemy, or a snowy enemy, uh, it'll deal an extra 2 damage. Which is pretty good. Now let's go ahead and finish off the rest of the enemies with a Power Quake. Yep. Perfecto mundo. Unfortunately, due to my choice to grind out a few more Amazing Daisies, it seems that the enemies for the remainder of the chapter, or at least at this point, are only going to give one star point each. Which is probably fine. Yeah, I would say it's definitely like all good, you know, water under the bridge sort of thing. Uh, that should be it. That letter, that's actually the last letter in the game, if I'm not mistaken. So, let's just swap to Goombardia for no particular reason, and... <laughs> Turn back! Come no further! Turn away or I'll eat you! What? Do you think, scary monster, aren't I? You know what you want to run. What? You will regret this! So, um, let's just tackle this creature known only as Monster. Uh, yeah. It looks really terrifying. And Goombario isn't able to give you the attack stat, but that doesn't matter. This thing only has 20 HP. We literally just fought a souped up Junior Troopa not even five minutes ago. So, I don't know what you guys are expecting here, but, um, why don't we charge up our jump attack and see what kind of an attack Monstar is capable of here. Wow, um, I'm, I'm like, so impressed. Monstar deals only one damage. The reason that no damage was taken even though I didn't block is because I had the insight to equip a Defend Plus. Which is also a very useful badge to equip for Junior Trooper, by the way, because it means that he can, de he can only deal 7 damage at most with a Defend Plus. If you're going up against enemies where you think blocking their attacks consistently is difficult, it may be better to opt for the single Defend Plus over the double damage dodge. So for the remainder of this chapter, I will be opting for the Defend Plus setup. Which also means you probably want to try and upgrade your HP a little bit more. Um, I have had playthroughs of Paper Mario where I opted to have like 10 more HP than whatever my current FP is. It's a little lopsided though. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of that setup, I must admit. So yeah, with two Power Plus badges and charging up your jump a single time and Goombario or Lady Bow in your party uh, in the fight, you can defeat Monstar in one turn. They'll get, I mean, Monstar will get a chance to use one attack, but it turns out Monstar was just an illusion created by a bunch of Star Kids, as it were. Well, ain't that something? We're going to swap, swap to Lakyoser to give him as much spotlight as possible, given that I really don't know... And say hello to Merle. This is Merlin's son. And believe it or not, even though he's Merlin's son, 
I don't have the reflexive instinct to hold down the text skip button, but I may still blank on this text a little bit, so I do apologize in advance if you're trying to read this dialogue. Uh, I will say that Merle has a little bit more important information to divulge than his father does, who usually will just tell you what you probably already figured out for the most part. Ah, uh, but actually, we do want to swap to Paracary and talk to this green frozen toad over here, because it turns out this guy is Frosty, the uncle of uh, the green toad kid. I think he's the uncle of the green toad kid from Toad Town Station. From Little Dainty and Mini T. Those nine little rascals. So this letter is continuing the chain, and Frosty will give you a letter to take to Goompapa and Goomba Village. This will finally complete the letter chain, and you will get something for your trouble. Believe you me. So yeah, Merle apologized for the rude reception of the Star Kids. I mean, hey, it's a, it was a free, what, 13 Star Points? I mean, hey, gives more than the regular enemies do, so you can't complain too much, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're going to keep heading uh, up here just to see what Merle has to say. This is the only time you have to talk to Merle. The only time you have to visit Starborn Valley, really. This is what this area is called, as it were. So, yeah, I mean, you really don't have to worry about that too much. So, yeah, he just tells you that this is Frozen, uh, this is Starborn Valley. Because it is here that stars are born and raised before rising to the sky. But ever since Bowser stole the Star Rod, yeah, it's been kind of messy, you know. And it turns out the Ninji was sent by him. So he could coax Mario to come here. Ah, because he found out where the last Star Spirit is. Came to him in a dream. A vision, as it were. And this is where it gets a little weird. So yeah, the last Star Spirit is being held atop Shiver Mountain, which lies to the north. At the Crystal... Palace, okay? So, the Crystal Palace is going to be home to the, one of the hardest bosses, the hard, one of the hardest mandatory bosses in the game. If you thought Huff and Puff was a challenge, just you wait and see who is the owner of the Crystal Palace because, yeah, that's that might throw you for a loop if you're not prepared ahead of time. In the meantime, we received the scarf. Just an ordinary scarf seemingly, but it's been passed down through many generations. But, uh, we have to use this and another item that was passed down in Shiver City. So we're going to have to backtrack the Shiver City, Shiver City, but that's probably alright. Yeah, so, we don't really need to hear much else. We know we need the scarf and we need an item from Shiver City, as it were. And a small shrine somewhere along the path to the Crystal Palace. That the truth lies not only in the eyes, sometimes even walls may lie. So, basically, probably an invisible wall or something like that. You could take a nap at the Toad House here. It's kind of a bit excessive to have two Toad Houses uh, so close to one another, I think. Optionally, you can defeat the enemies again. They respawn after the uh, monster fight, but they give so little star points that I'm not really going to bother. Uh, let's try giving this snowman that doesn't have a scarf the scarf. Man, yeah, we'll just leave it there for now. We'll come back to that. Let's head through here and... Wow. We weren't gone that long, but it was long enough that Junior Troopa is now frozen solid. Well, we can't hit, we can't bully him anymore, unfortunately. Oh well, but yeah, he's uh, stuck in ice. Who knows if he'll ever get uh, melted or escape from it? Uh, who could say, really? Let's go ahead and head back to Shiver City. If you didn't already get the star panel or the um, uh, the attack FX E badge, now is a great time to do that. Uh, normally, I like to end the episode by sleeping at the Toad House, but I actually want to do it now. Not just to recover our health and all that, but also I want to show off that by sleeping in this Toad House specifically, this is the only way to get the Iced Potato item. This is uh, pretty much the final item you can get for cooking tasty recipes. You do have to reach Chapter 7 at least. 
And in order to get all the recipes, you will need at least two iced potatoes. But I actually recommend getting, like, three. You know, just to be on the safe side. So we're going to take that iced potato and we're going to just put it in storage. And you can check 23 more items. Ugh, that is just relaxing. We're also going to put the repel gel in storage because I don't think we're really, uh... I don't think we're really going to need it much for this chapter. You know what? I'm going to sell the blueberry because why not? And let's check the item storage since maybe you guys aren't caught up in snuffs. We've got life shrooms. We've got repel gels. We got the Yoshi cookie that's not going to be used but it's there because it's cool. We've got shooting stars ready, ready and waiting for chapter 8. Ice potato. We're going to put those in storage to finish off the recipes. Jelly Ultra, Maple Syrup, Healthy Juice, restores 40 flower points, which is very good, and a Deluxe Feast. Wacka, may he rest in peace. Oh, Wacka. Oh. But anyway, uh, we do want to head back to the Mayor's house, obviously. Uh, make sure Pear carries the one in your active party, because we also have to deliver a letter to Mayor Penguin. So, you're really doing uh, two purposes here. So, yeah, you talk to the mayor, and he, you tell him about what happened with Merle, something about the item being passed down. And it turns out, the item that was passed down was a bucket. Why items like a scarf and a bucket were passed down around Shiver City and Starborn Valley is anybody's guess. But there's a legend associated with it. Basically, the items may or may not be relevant to the snowman we passed by earlier. So, yeah. But, we deliver the letter to Mayor Penguin, and we get a star piece, of course. As usual. And, yeah, we are nearing the end of star piece collection, not counting Chuck Quizmo. So, we're down 15 questions on Chuck Quizmo. We need to do... 49 more. So, yeah, it's looking like Chuck Quizmo is probably going to have to be his own uh, bonus video at this rate. So, we are going to end the episode here. And next time on Let's Play Paper Mario, our journey to the Crystal Palace begins. It's going to be kind of a rough road to get there. And then the actual Crystal Palace itself it's not going to be a walk in the park either. This might be a shorter episode, but there's a reason for that. It's so you guys can chill and relax for the incoming snowstorm that's going to be the Crystal Palace. You guys bundle up, stay warm, take care, and stock up on some iced potatoes. They might just come in handy. And by the way, if you're craving some french fries, cook an iced potato with a fire flower. You won't regret it. See you guys next time.